Stanislav Lem was many different writers, five writers at least. Lem, one, is the author of Eden, Solaris, Return from the Stars, The Invincible, Fiasco, and innumerable short stories about an interstellar navigator called Perks. That's to say, a 20th century hard science fiction writer, one with visionary gifts and inexhaustible diligence when it came to the task of extrapolation. Hard science fiction is the tradition originating not in Mary Shelley's Gothic Frankenstein, but rather in H.G. Wells' technological prognostications. The hard science fiction tradition likes Jules Verne, the predictor of submarines and holograms, but frowns at his fanciful plots. Standardized in the mid-century U.S. in Astounding magazine, hard science fiction advertises consumer goods like personal robots and flying cars. It valorizes space travel that culminates in successful, if difficult, contact with the alien life assumed to be strewn throughout the galaxies and glows with a self-ratifying sense of wonder. This movement is where a fascination with technology in the future became mashed up with American exceptionalist ideology, technocratic triumphalism, manifest destiny, libertarian survivalist bullshit. Hard science fiction fueled both the Cold War space race and Ronald Reagan's Star Wars dream. Lem, too, wrote fairy tales and folk tales of the future, phantasmagorical satires, allegories of 20th century alienation, and stories of horror of the cosmic or existential variety. His many books include The Siberiad, a cycle of techno fables, and the paranoid picaresque novels Memoirs Found in a Bathtub and the Futurological Congress, which as a teenage reader I made my talismans. The preoccupations of Lem II resemble those of Lem I. The iconography, robots, scientists, inventors, space travel, impossible aliens. There's even a funhouse mirror version of Perks the Pilot, a droll and resilient voyager through absurdist futures called Ion Tishi. In another sense, the second Lem is the opposite of the first. The first exalts realistic science, regards the future seriously as a destination our species will have to endure, and sneers at fantasy and exaggeration. The second makes any and every science fiction gesture fodder for metaphor, allegory, and surrealist defamiliarization, while mixing spaceships and aliens with kings and queens, dragons and monsters. Lem III wrote just two novels, yet he could easily be on the right day one's favorite. The investigation and the chain of chance are ontological whodunits, both centering on mysterious sequences of crimes whose only plausible suspect appears to be the universe itself. Their cases resolve divergently, but together form a rebuke to generic expectation, a dialectic on our urge to frame and solve mysteries in the first place. Lem IV is the pure postmodernist who unified his essayistic and fictional selves with a Borgesian or Nabokovian gesture. A perfect vacuum, imaginary magnitude, and one human minute comprise reviews and forewords to non-existent books. Most of them are scientific treatises full of misanthropic fulminations with titles like The World is Cataclysm and Civilization as a Mistake and on the impossibility of life. These satirical miniatures somersault over every trap. The reader benefits from Lem's obvious delight and relief at dispensing with fiction's theatrical mechanics. What's left is the ventriloquized voice of the scholars and autodidacts who've written the imaginary books. Lem's Kinboats and Pierre Menard's. Lem IV is a kind of magic act. Lem V? He's another major figure. Prolific essayist, futurist, and literary critic. A supreme armchair anythingist, he shows no hesitation in dismissing Hegel, Gravity's Rainbow, or Buddhism. His Summa Technologiae is a torrential magnum opus of futurism and speculative philosophy, written in his miraculous years between 1961 and 1964. 
Sections like Prolego Mena to Omnipotence and A Lampoon of Evolution, and chapters headed The Dangers of Electocracy and Cyborgization announce a cascade of insights and speculations. Lem the Seer is exasperated, eccentrically lyrical, and permanently fresh. One has only to dip into the chapter called Phantomatics to see that in 1964, Lem had already grasped more of the implications of virtual reality, of meta, than Mark Zuckerberg ever will. Lem speculates that the end game, as the illusion matrix perfects itself, might force users into a logical trap in which the only person they could trust for authentication would be themselves, since any given friend or lover or psychiatrist could actually be a seamlessly rendered product of the Phantom app, and therefore under the guidance of one's enemy.